Welcome to Physician Academy. Today we're going to discuss type 2 diabetes and second line therapies. So the second line therapies we're going to be looking at today are a group of therapies called the glitazones. We've already discussed metformin and in previous lectures sulfonylureas. So today we're talking about the glitazones. They're called glitazones because all their names have glitazone in them and they're classed so it's easy to remember them as glitazones. Uh, another name for them is TZDs. They're called TZDs because thiozolinidinidione is too hard to say five times fast. So it's easier to say TZDs. Another one is glitazones. So the two glitazones we're going to discuss are the ones that are commonly used are pioglitazone, also known as Actos, and rosiglitazone, known as Avandia. The mechanism of action mainly is increasing insulin sensitivity through a cascade effect. So there's a long, lot of steps that are affected by this medic, medication. They, have a, they bind uh, by activating uh, PPARS, which is the peroxo, peroxisome proliferator activated receptors, which is a group of nuclear receptors. By activating these receptors, they affect the transcripts transcription of a number of specific genes, decreasing the transcription of others. This then leads to an effect on cellular metabolism, so cells become more dependent on the oxida oxidation of carbohydrates because they have a uh, decreased access to fatty acids. So the expression of, or repression of specific genes causes an increase in the storage of fatty acids and the adipocytes decreasing the amount of fatty acids present in circulation. This causes a, the cell's downline to become more dependent on the oxidation of carbohydrates, more specifically glucose, in order to yield energy uh, for other cellular processes. So this increases uh, insulin sensitivity. As a result, you also get a decrease in triglycerides and an increase in high-density lipoproteins, HDLC, uh, and low-density lipoproteins, LDLC. The medications are generally metabolized through the liver and excreted in the urine. They use the liver's CYP450 uh, enzyme system, and they're excreted uh, in the urine about 15 to 30%, depending on the medication. So monitoring requires an exam of the liver profile, liver enzyme profiles, as well as the kidney function. So a complete metabolic profile is necessary before starting these me uh, medications. And as long as the patient remains stable, you can continue use of these medications. Side effects are hepatitis, and there's a possible increase in coronary heart disease risk or heart attacks, water retention, and weight gain. Uh, at this moment, it's unclear if they do cause uh, increase in heart attacks. However, they have uh, th that issue is being monitored, so you need to take that into account and be aware of it as you're deciding to prescribe these medications. So, what's the starting dose for Actos or pioglitazone? I usually start it at 15 milligrams daily. The max dose is 45 milligrams uh, daily. Avandia and or also uh, risaglitazone. Rizag you started at four milligrams daily, um, or tw two milligrams twice a day, to a max of eight milligrams daily. Again, every three months, you would monitor the patient with a complete metabolic profile, fasting cholesterol panel, and a hemoglobin A1C, and adjust your treatment according to changes that occur to the patient. The nice thing about these medications is they do not have a hypoglycemic event associated with them. So you can encourage the patient to remain on a low-carb, low-fat diet, and you should have great benefits as long as the patient is maintaining that. And they work very well with metformin.